Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
The reading is from the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Be attentive. Brethren, God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts that we in turn might make known the glory of God shining on the face of Christ. This treasure we possess in earthen vessels to make it clear that its surpassing power comes from God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way possible, but we are not crushed. Full of doubts, we never despair. We are persecuted, but never abandoned. We are struck down, but never destroyed. Continually, we carry about in our bodies the dying of Jesus, so that in our bodies the life of Jesus may also be revealed. While we live, we are constantly being delivered to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our mortal flesh. Death is at work in us, but life in you. We have that spirit of faith of which the scripture says, because I believed, I spoke out. We believe and so we speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up along with Jesus and place both of us and you in his presence. Indeed, everything is ordered to your benefit so that the grace bestowed in abundance may bring greater glory to God because they who give thanks are many. Peace be to you, reader. stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. At that time, one of the doctors of the law, putting Jesus to the test and questioned him, asked, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with thy whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus questioned them, saying, What do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, David's. He said to them, How then does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David therefore calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one could answer him a word, 
Neither did anyone dare from that day on to ask him any more questions. I speak to you, reader of the gospel and the good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Trivia night is coming up for our parish next month. And this morning, I thought I would give us all some practice, even get us in the mood for trivia night. So I have some trivia questions for you. Put on your smartest thinking cap. First question, which saint was the most popular in naming our diocesan churches? Is it John, St. John the Baptist, St. Mary, or St. Nicholas? Answer, if you said all three, you were correct. Actually, all three have 12 parishes, each named after them. Second question, which deanery has three out of four churches named after St. John the Baptist and is also placed under the protection of St. John the Baptist? I'll give you a hint. Seminary in Mahalia is smiling. New England Deanery is the answer. Third question, which deanery is placed under the protection of St. John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth? Answer, Canadian Deanery. How are you doing so far? If not well, don't fret, there are two more questions. Fourth question, how many feasts are dedicated to St. John the Baptist on the calendar? Six, that's the answer, six, and they are synaxis of St. John the Baptist, the first and second finding of the head of St. John, the third finding of the head of St. John, the birth of St. John the Baptist, the beheading of St. John the Baptist. And one more, one more, which is the answer to the final and fifth trivia question this morning. Fifth question, what is the saint's observance of today, October the 6th? Answer, the conception of St. John the Baptist. Maybe you didn't do so well this morning. Then study up and get ready for trivia night next month. Let's talk about this story of the conception of St. John the Baptist. The story is told in the very first chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. In fact, St. Luke is the only Gospel writer who carries this story. And it is so important to St. Luke that it is told immediately at the beginning of his gospel, starting with the fifth verse of chapter 1. It's not buried somewhere in the gospel. It's right there at the very beginning of his gospel. And there's a reason for this. In one chapter, St. Luke tells about two birth announcements. One was John the Baptist and the other was Jesus. The two babies were born within 
six months of each other, and they were second cousins. Their mothers, Elizabeth and Mary, were first cousins. How is that for a holy family? Basically, the story is this. Zechariah was a priest who was married to Elizabeth. They were both elderly. They had wanted a child for a long time, but they were never blessed with children. One day, Zechariah was serving as priest, and it was time for him to go into the temple to burn incense. The people stayed outside, as was the custom, and they waited for the priest to come out. Inside, when Zechariah came to the altar of incense, here's what he saw. An angel stood at the right side of the altar of incense. The scripture says that Zechariah was startled and gripped with fear. What would you feel like? I'm sure Zechariah asked himself, could this be the angel of death come for me? And so he prepared himself for anything right at that moment. And then the angel announced who he was by name, Gabriel. The angel told him he was sent by God to announce that Zechariah and Elizabeth would have a son. Archangel Gabriel told Zechariah not to be afraid. He told him to have faith and all would be well. This was all great news. This was news that Zechariah and Elizabeth wanted to hear for years. The news should have been the end of a beautiful story, but it wasn't. Here's when Zechariah made the fatal mistake. He asked Archangel Gabriel, how can I be sure of this? In other words, he questioned God. Big mistake. Here's what Gabriel told him. Because you didn't believe me, you will now be mute and you will not talk until the child is born. Sure enough, Zechariah could not form words hard as he tried. He could not speak. For nine months he was mute until the eighth day after the baby was born. On that day, Elizabeth and Zechariah took the newborn to the temple. There was squabbling over what to name him. Zechariah took a writing tablet and he wrote on it, his name is John. Do you know his speech returned immediately? Is there a lesson here for us? There is. In fact, it's as plain as day. The lesson is this. Never doubt the all-powerful God. Believe him. Don't ever say how or why to God. I'm sure you already know this. Resisting the urge to doubt God is not easy. That's because we live in this instant world of ours where we want answers ASAP, if not sooner. But God doesn't work that way with us. The old doubting Thomas in every one of us kicks in. Many times we run into situations which we know only God can fix. But be honest now. Have you ever wondered, even a little bit, if and when God will fix those situations? Remember Zechariah in our story. The angel Gabriel didn't negotiate with him at all. Zechariah went mute for nine months because he doubted the message God sent him. What's going on with us when we doubt God? Firstly, when we doubt God, we are really questioning his ability and his all-powerfulness. We are showing a huge lack of faith. 
I laughed this past week when I heard a truck commercial for the Dodge Ram 1500. The commercial went like this. This truck is designed to move heaven and earth. I've owned a lot of Chrysler Corporation products over the years, but as good as they are, the very best of them could not move heaven and earth. God does that. Don't doubt that powerfulness. He can. He does. Secondly, <clears throat> when we doubt God, we look. We actually look for excuses not to obey him. I have to smile every time I think of the excuses that Moses made when God told him to go to Pharaoh and ask him to deliver the Israelites out of the slavery of Egypt. First of all, Moses said to God, what authority do I have to tell Pharaoh what to do? Next he said, the Israelites won't listen to me. And finally he said, I can't talk right. Moses was really saying to God, you picked the wrong person to do this job. What an insult to God. Is it possible that you also, think about this, is it possible that you also may have insulted God sometime by making up excuses not to obey him? Thirdly, when we doubt God, we sometimes take matters into our own hands. And then we make impulsive, bad choices that we are sorry for later. The classic example is in the Bible's book of Numbers. God gave the Israelites the, Can the land of Canaan, a great land, but they doubted God's ability to deliver the land to them. And when they did that, they provoked God. And as a punishment, God placed on them the judgment of 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Almost a whole generation of Israelites died only because they doubted God. A whole generation lost. Fourthly, <clears throat> when we doubt God, we become anxious and afraid. Didn't that happen to Peter when Jesus called him to climb out of the boat during a windstorm and walk on the water to him? It sure did. Peter was okay with the miracle of walking on the water. But the instant he doubted, that he could continue to do that, he instantly started to sink. Down into the water he went. Today is the commemoration of the conception of St. John the Baptist. And I'm hoping and praying that from our study this morning and from our worship and from our hearing the scripture, I hope you leave with more faith than you had when you came in this morning. Christ is among us.
Svetom Duhu, ne nje krisno je o viki viko. founders, benefactors of this church and all our churches, our government, and all those serving in civil authority in behalf of our country everywhere, our armed forces, wherever they may serve, especially in places where there is war and unrest. We remember also, O oh Lord, those in the homes, the hospitals, and the institutions 
those who have asked us to pray for them this day, those who are present here, and among those who are hospitalized and ill at home, we remember your servants, Dolores, Machesco, Irene Pop, Aaron Ryan, Nicholas Rapaski, Marlene Matoliak, Nick Coslin, Peter Yurchishin, Mitch Spanovich, Father Luke Mihaly, Deacon Michael Kozar, and Pani Magdalene Blaschak. We remember also, O Lord, those who are worshiping with us by way of the internet this day. We remember those who celebrate their birthdays, Mary Kinja, Michael Matoliak Jr., Katerina Vadovac, Marilyn Burl, Vivian Slakta, Barbara Martiak, Garnis Lear, and Kelly Dieter. We remember also, O Lord, those who are reposed in you, and among them, your servants, the priests, Father John Pavlinchek, whom we keep in perpetual remembrance, Dimitri, Anna, and John Ahusti, Michael Cranek, Martha Miller, Paul Kalchik, and Robert Nitkolinik. On the ninth anniversary of his repose, and all our departed, and all you Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember all of you in his kingdom now and ever and forever. of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, to give you holy grace and life-giving spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us stand aright, let us stand with fear. Let us be attentive so that we may offer the holy sacrifice in peace.
everything in a divine plan for our redemption on the night on which he was betrayed, or rather on the night on which he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread into his holy altar and immaculate hands, and having given thanks, blessed, sanctified, and broke it, and he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you for the remission of sin. Amen. In like manner, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, All of you drink of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Especially for ever holy, but pure, but blessed, and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary. First, O Lord, the Holy Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, our God-loving Bishop Gregory, preserve them for your holy churches in peace and safety and honor and health for many years, so they may faithfully dispense the word of the truth. sublime name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. And may the mercy to our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Oh, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
touched your lips, it shall take away all your sins, and it will cleanse you of all your iniquity. Save, O God, your people, and bless your
your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine light and forsake not us to put our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to your priests, to the honorable governor of our country, to its armed forces, and to all your people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights, and to you we give glory and thanksgiving and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. of the precious and life-giving cross through the intercession of St. John Chrysostom, whose liturgy we celebrate this day, through the intercession of all the saints, especially through our commemoration of the conception of St. John the Baptist this day. Have mercy on us and save us, for he is gracious, and he loves all mankind. Please be seated for a few moments. I have these announcements for us. We are, first of all, grateful for flowers today. Flowers on the altar are in memory of Paul Kalchik, requested by Susan Kalchik, and the eternal light will burn all this week in memory of Bob Nitkolinets, requested by wife Stella. Also the candles burning at the royal doors uh, will burn all week as our prayers are raised for health of Nick Rapaski. So please keep all those intentions uh, privately in, in your homes also this week. Today is the Johnston Deanery 3D dinner at Sunny Hannah C Country Club. Uh, the appetizers are at 345. The dinner begins at 430. Cathedral seniors will gather for the monthly meeting on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Hostesses are Vivian Slakta, Julie Messner, and Stella Nitkolinets. Everyone is asked to please bring something. The main course will be supplied. Cathedral seniors also plan to go to the Darlington Inn near Idlewild Park by Ligonier for a Hungarian dinner. Um, that ev event is, is coming up uh, this weekend, coming weekend. Use the sign-up sheet in the vestibule so that we know how many persons to call in. Tuesday at the seniors' meeting is the absolute latest day to register. There's a trivia night meeting tomorrow night at 6.30, and we're asking that all workers please attend. It won't be very long, but we're getting closer to the event, and we have to, um, we have to come together and see uh, how, how we're doing with our plans. Tomorrow night, 6.30, downstairs. We have ordered two new candlesticks for the altar boys to carry in processions. These are going to replace two of them that are so worn uh, they can no longer even be cleaned properly. So it's time to get two new ones. Um, after many, many, many years of uh, usage, the candlesticks if there's anyone interested in sponsoring one or both of them, they are $290 each. Anybody interested, please see me or stop in the cathedral office downstairs. The Greater Johnstown Orthodox Youth will have an outing 
to see the Johnstown Tomahawks play on Sunday, November the 3rd at 1 o'clock. Tickets for children 12 and under are just $6. Tickets for individuals 13 and up are $12. And these are center ice seats. The event is open to everybody, not just our youth. So if you wish to make plans uh, to bring others in your family along with Sunday school children, this is wonderful. There's a sign up sheet for the event. Louise Brudniak, our Sunday school superintendent, has uh, the forms and also information. Um, if you have any questions regarding the event, uh, ask us and we will try to h help you with it. This is on Sunday, November the 3rd, so we need to, if, you, if you're planning on going, you need to make the reservations now so that we can reserve the seats for us. Um, I bring this notice to, to all of your attention. There is a petition circulating throughout the city that is addressing the high costs of work that is being required of property owners to satisfy Act Number 537, the Pennsylvania Sewage Facilities Act. If you are interested, there are materials downstairs explaining this matter, and you may browse the materials and study the petition if you wish. Those uh, materials are downstairs. Coffee shop today is hosted by Mary Jane Matoliak and Courtney and Joy Matoliak. All are invited. Father Brancho's adult class also will meet at the same time. Anybody can, uh, can join that class at any time. Please come any Sunday. You are, you are most welcome in that adult class. There will be a national junior ACRY encounter at Camp Nazareth on November the 8th through the 10th. There are wonderful activities being planned for that weekend. Bishop Gregory plans to be there also with uh, our juniors. Cost per person for the weekend is $65, and there is a sign-up sheet downstairs. Uh, juniors from our parish are going to meet juniors from other uh, junior chapters throughout the diocese. So parents, please keep this in mind the weekend of November 8th through the 10th. And if you will consider sending your children or even going with them, uh, check on the materials that we have available downstairs and sign up. As you know, we have announced already that we need cookies for the upcoming Sobor. And after the announcement last Sunday, some people said that they um, could donate towards cookies, but they could not bake. Uh, we will accept any donations. In fact, we have located a baker who will be happy to bake as many cookies as we want. So if you feel that you can be of assistance and you're not baking yourself, see Pony Maloro, Pony Branick, or Pony Brancho, and they will be more than happy to accept your donations, and we will order the cookies and it will be as painless as possible for everybody. If you want to be in your own kitchen and, and bake some uh, beautiful, special cookies uh, for the Sobor, certainly you can do that also. So please uh, consider the uh, alternative choice. We are welcoming Father Deacon Steve Hall and Nancy, who are here with us this morning. Uh, they've been here the, throughout the whole weekend, and we wish them safe travel as they return home to Maryland this afternoon. On our sick list at Conema Memorial Hospital, please remember Nick uh, Rapaski. And speaking of sick lists, there's someone here with us this morning who uh, has not been here for, it's about 11 months, isn't it? Elaine Dutko has remarkably been a patient between Johnstown Connemaw Memorial Hospital and hospitals, several hospitals in Pittsburgh. It's about 11 months. That's extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. You have heard us praying for her every week. 
every Sunday, over and over and over again. She's right here this morning for the first time in many, many, many months. Elaine, we are happy to see you. God bless you. Stay well. Stay well. We don't want a new priest starting next month to have to visit you in the hospital. Stay well. Be well. Good to see you. You look wonderful. Uh, please also don't forget, parents, that our uh, Sunday School Hayride is this Saturday at Weekland Farms from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And all Sunday School children are no charge. Uh, please take care of registering for that event with one of the teachers. Uh, if you haven't done that already this morning, call one of the teachers and make sure that you are on the registration list. At the conclusion of this liturgy, <clears throat> we're going to sing in the Requiem prayers of the Panachide, a remembrance of the priest, Father John Pavlinchak. We're also going to remember Dimitri, Anna, and John Husti, Michael Cranach, Martha Miller, Paul Kalchik, and Robert Nitkolinets on the ninth anniversary of his repose. We are grateful for your presence today for your gifts to the church, your offerings, for your singing, for just being here and worshiping. That is our highest uh, form of gratitude that we have to all of you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his care, and we will see you next Sunday and urge others who maybe are not so good at attending. You do it. Urge them to come. Be here. There is no better way to start our week, as those of you who worship regularly know. The Lord bless you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen. Christ is among us. May God grant to all those who have here gathered for worship this day. Give them all, O oh Lord, peace, health, and happiness for many happy and blessed years. And we also are so happy um, to have Bishop Gregory here with us this morning. Uh, he has not been here for quite some time. Do you know why? He has been fulfilling his pledge, his promise to the people of our churches at his ordination that within two years, probably a little longer now because because he's from the south, he didn't figure into this mix, the fact that we got winter here. So it's going to take him a little longer. But he has been week after week after week making his visitations. Today is one of those weekends. He's here. He's not anywhere. He's here for us. We pray for his health, long life, peace for many happy and blessed years. May God grant to his grace, Bishop Gregory, peace, health, and happiness for many happy and blessed years.